All right, now I'd like to introduce you to the Digilent PMOD ALS or ambient light sensor. We'll review its functionality and features and also take a look at the SPI bus and chip select timing for this device. This is the ambient light sensor included in the NI MyRio Mechatronics kit. It's the Digilent PMOD ALS. It's based on a photo transistor from Vichy Semiconductors as well as an analog to digital converter from Texas Instruments. And that's located right here. Let's first take a look at the functional diagram for the PMOD ALS board. The Vichy Semiconductors photo transistor is located right here. It's wired between the supply voltage and ground. This voltage varies according to the incident light on the photo transistor. Inside the analog to digital converter, we begin with a track and hold device. We either pass that analog voltage through, that's tracking, or we hold it at a constant level. Track and hold output is connected to the analog to digital converter. This is a successive approximation style converter. And that means it does require a reasonable amount of time to make the conversion and it produces 8-bit samples. The TI chip also contains the control logic and SPI bus interface. The SPI ultimately then is the point of contact back to the MyRio SPI inputs on either connector A or connector B. Ambient light sensors find a number of different useful applications. You can use them to sense general lighting conditions. You could track and follow a light source on a robot application or follow a line pathway. Especially if you need to improve the directionality, you might consider using a shroud or little cylinder that you can use to make the sensor more directional. Quick review of the PMOD ALS features. As I mentioned earlier, it's an 8-bit resolution analog to digital converter, zero tells you that the sensor is dark. You can get up to one mega sample per second. You can power the board between 2.7 and 5.25 volts, although 3.3 volts is recommended. And it's based on SPI serial communications, anywhere from 25 kilohertz to 20 megahertz. My Rio is 40 hertz to four megahertz, just for reference. The guaranteed performance, according to the spec sheet, is 50 kilosamples per second up to 200 kilosamples per second with SPI clock of 1 MHz to 4 MHz. Although you'll find that the converter delivers perfectly acceptable performance even at much lower sampling frequencies. Let's review the pin connections that you'll need to connect the PMOT ALS to the MyRio. We have six pins all together beginning with the chip select on top, pin number one. This is an active low signal. Pin two is a no connect. Pin three, SDA, that's serial data out. You want to connect this to the MyRio SPI MISO, or master in servant out. SCL, serial clock. This will be from the MyRio SPI serial clock output. Ground and VCC. That would be the power supply connections, and 3.3 volts, again, is recommended for this board. Now let's review the SPI bus and chip select timing. The analog converter has two modes, either track or hold, and it begins in the track mode. Chip select normally would be high. We drop it low to initiate a conversion cycle. This puts the converter in the hold mode. Looking at the serial clock, normally this is a high signal that is idle high, and then after we drop the chip select, we can start initiating the serial clock pulses. Here's how serial data responds. Normally it will be in the high impedance state, or Z state as it's called. As soon as we drop the chip select, Serial data will become active with some initially unknown value, but once we see that first falling edge of serial clock, then the serial data will assume its first well-defined value, which happens to be a zero. In fact, the analog to digital converter will produce three leading zeros on those first three S clock pulses. And that's because the conversion is still in progress. After that, we will see the 
first data bit emerge, and this is most significant bit first. Call that D7. That would be the next bit, and so on, continuing down to the last bit, or least significant bit, LSB for short. And we have a number of serial clock pulses remaining. The converter will clock out four trailing zeros. Now here we see that shortly after the eight data bits have been clocked out, the converter switches back to track mode. All during this time, the chip select has still been low, and then eventually we want to raise that high to prepare for the next conversion cycle. Now notice on this 16th serial clock pulse, we see that the serial data reverts to the high impedance mode. Now back here we see that the MyRio reads serial data on the trailing edge of the serial clock pulse. The leading edge is when serial data is clocked out from the converter. This is important for proper setup of the SPI Express VI. On the 16th clock pulse we see that the MyRio reads a 1 value. That's due to the internal pull-up resistor on the MXP connector. Before dropping chip select low again to begin the next conversion, you need to observe some minimum timing. You need at least 10 nanoseconds for chip select to be high. You need at least 50 nanoseconds after high Z mode, and you need at least 350 nanoseconds after you enter or re-enter the tracking mode. Let's wrap things up by taking a look at the my Rio SPI Express VI setup that would be required to match this timing. Here you see a reminder for the pins necessary for the SPI bus. We'll be reading values. I'll use the moderate frequency here of 1 megahertz. Frame length needs to be 16 bits. Clock phase is trailing, indicating that My Rio reads serial data on the trailing edge. Clock polarity is high to reflect the fact that serial clock should be high in the idle mode. And data direction is most significant bit first. Lastly, to recover the 8-bit value from the SPI Express VI output, you can either right shift by 5 bits or equivalently divide by 32.